guys and welcome to the next installment of how strong is where i go over um vogoth this time and vogoth is just this epic champion who does a lot of healing and he's quite the tank and a lot of people have been using him uh, you know full disclosure i personally have not really used him before so I've, as you can see he's never been built I, I don't really know too much about him other than I've seen people use him. He's a great healer. He heals the entire team, and he's basically like a like a punching bag that just won't die. Now, what I plan to do here, I'm, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. Is I'm going to walk you guys through the whole building process. So we're going to go over the skills, his kits, his masteries. Do I even have masteries? I do have masteries on him. Okay, so at some point I got masteries on him. Maybe I built him out for um, Centronus a while back or, or something. I don't know. The point is, we're going to go ahead and uh, really dive in, and maybe this time around I'll actually use him, so we'll see. But he is an HP-based champion, he's an epic, so if you got him, from my understanding, he is a great epic to have. Okay, Demon Lord makes sense with all the heals, Arena Defense could make sense too, Faction Wars, uh, Campaign. Actually, that's probably what it was. I was probably using him in Faction Wars a while back to clear the, uh, the Crypt. Fire Knight? I guess Fire Knight makes sense. Does it? We'll see. Offense, Dragon Slayer. So all around, he's a pretty good, great champion, probably. High ratings all around. His A1 attacks, th it's a three hitter. That kind of makes sense. Each hit has a 30%, looks up to 40% chance of increasing the duration of one random debuff on the target by one turn. So yeah, that makes sense, especially in the context of Clan Boss. And I guess it could make sense for Fire Knight too if you're trying to extend debuffs to increase it. So yeah, and he's HP based, uh, HP based champion, so very tanky naturally. His A2 on a three turn cooldown has a 75% chance, bucks up to 80 if you get the mastery, of placing a provoke debuff on all enemies for one turn. 60% chance of placing decrease attack. For two turns on targets who receive the provoke debuff from this skill then probably his calling card festering dynamo whenever this champion is attacked heals all allies by 50 percent of the damage received that is a huge heal only 25 percent from boss attacks champion only receives half of the heal than that of other allies okay so he he is also healing himself so that's pretty nice when attacked, places a leech debuff on the attacker for even more healage, more survivability. If the attacker is under provoke, placed by this champion, has a 100% chance of increasing the cooldown of a random skill on the attacker by two turns. Occurs once per attack. Yeah, so I can definitely see how this character would be a really nice pull, especially if you're early on and don't really have a good a good roster i think i'd be excited to have this champion on my free-to-play account especially since i don't have too many champions that can heal or help me survive against uh the later stages of of the dungeons as well as in clan boss because right now i have nick mothar who does place leech he does provide heals but for me to have to rely on that leech is a little bit um it's hard for me to want to rely on it, or to reliably rely on it. It's not as consistent as having somebody like Bogoth. And then I have Apothecary, but, you know, even though he is fast and he does go through his cycles quite a bit, um, it's still not a whole team heal. The nice thing is, he's going to be healing all of his team. So, with him being an HP-based champion, I think the way I would like to build him is as a tank. I don't know that I would worry too much about placing Provoke and Decrease Attack. I think his main purpose for me would probably be to just receive a lot of hits and then heal as much as possible. Now, I think because his healing correlates, or his healing does correlate with how much damage he receives, and that's how much healing output he's going to put on his team and himself. So I don't want to build him too tanky. I don't intend to build him with too much defense. So what I'll do is I'll put up, or I'll pull him up in the Hell Hades Optimizer, and we're going to prioritize HP. Here are the masteries, by the way. 
We're taking, I guess, uh, we're taking resilience, extra healing, rejuvenation, shadow heal. Yeah, we're taking all the heals and 60% chance of placing leech. I don't know about this because of his skill. Increased res by 10 for each debuff on this champion stacks up to 30. I think I would have rather taken delayed death, rather had have taken delayed death. And then we're going down to cycle of revenge to increase turn meter. I don't know that I would want him fast. Bulwark makes sense. I don't know that I'd want to increase turn meter though. And we have Spirit Haste. So the, these masteries don't make too much sense, but I'm not going to redo them. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to pay 150 gems to, to rework a masteries on a champion that I don't use. I guess it would make sense to go down the offense tree here and take the Giant Slayer route. You could take crit rate, crit damage. Move myself here so you guys can see. Crit rate, crit damage, probably life drinker, and then bring it down. And then we'd have to take kill streak to get over here to Giant Slayer. So something like that is what I would take if I was taking the offense tree. Definitely take damage mitigation here. And then if you wanted to go down here, I would take this path. And then probably not take this speed. Probably just take a. Well, it doesn't place any buffs. So maybe the support tree really isn't the best. I don't know. Somebody let me know. Somebody who actually uses Vogoth. Now, as I think about it, there are a few set pieces or set gear sets that I think he might benefit from. You could put him in Bolster because Bolster will place a shield on the entire team and then he gets a healage. Um, he gets 10% of that and then you could probably pair that with Immortal. You could also do regen any mortal. I think that would be quite annoying to go up against. And then let's see here. I guess if you wanted to solo, regen would also make sense. Maybe there's some some bosses out there that could be soloed. Frost set would be nice if you were gonna take him to arena. Maybe you want to frost somebody. Uh, shield set could also make sense. Curing set I think might be good because he's already healing by 50%. I think this bonus heal would be another, what, uh, that could be 70% in total. But yeah, uh, a curing set to increase the amount of healing on your entire team could be nice as well. I think what I'll do though is go for, oh, guardian set would actually be nice because he's taking, he's going to be a better tank that way. So he's going to receive more damage to keep the rest because he already has bulwark as a mastery right here. Then it would be 15% damage mitigation on your entire team if we could put him in Guardian set, but it looks like I don't have full set available. Well, let's go into the Hell Hades Optimizer. Oops. Let's type in Vogoth, and you can see it firsthand what I intend to prioritize. I'm not going to prioritize speed. I think what I'll try is... I don't want to pick that. Let's go. Let's first start off with not looking at equipped artifacts. And let's just focus on HP. I think this is the biggest thing. I don't really care about provoking, replacing decrease attack. All I care about is HP. And the reason I don't want defense is because I want him to heal more. If you put more defense, the more defense you have, the less damage Vogoth is going to be taking altogether. So with that being said, I'm only going to focus on HP so that he does receive more damage but that means he could heal more. And I think with that, we could decide to put him in uh, probably regen any mortal. Actually, let's try bolster. Although bolster is more of a pay to win set, I think regen is relatively more so acquirable for most. So we'll stick with uh, regen any mortal now that I'm talking about it. And then, yeah, we'll see. Okay, so for regen and immortal, we can get up to 70k HP. That is actually not what I like. So I guess 70k HP would make sense if you're early on. But for me and where I'm at, I think I'd like to have a minimum of, a, minimum of 100k HP, which is not happening. Maybe I take off the immortal. Looks like 100k is not happening if I don't take gear off of somebody else. Okay, so it can happen, but I have to take gear off of Gnarlhorn, which I'm not going to. 
Yeah, I'd have to take gear off of people I don't want to take gear off of. Or what about Triple Immortal? Triple Immortal makes sense. Especially for a lot of people. Especially if you're early on. Okay, so we can get a Triple Immortal 100k, 2.4 defense, slow, nice and slow, and then some resin accuracy. And we're taking gear off of champions I don't actually use, because I don't really use Oella. So this is actually okay with me. So let's go ahead and put this together. And we're all in Immortal. So go to Immortal. Now Immortal gives 15%. It's going to be 45% uh, 40 boost with the set. On top of that, you get 369% heals um, when you have a full 3 set. Unfortunately, we don't... I mean, we don't get a lot of healing. I mean, he does heal a lot by himself. Ideally, I would have taken regen because regen heals by 15% instead of just the 9. But, you know, it is what it is. Plus, I think more people will be able to uh, get this kind of build going with Immortal. But definitely you want to make sure he's staying alive, keeping himself alive. So let's go ahead and take this. Okay, so now Volgoth is... We'll just go ahead and max out his entire kit here just to give you the best that I, I can in a way again I don't want him to go fast I, I guess you would want him to go decently fast so that he does proc his heals but I also want him to just sit there and take hits plus he has healing whenever he does take damage so that'll uh, that'll suffice HP here. We're not going to use that actually. How are you guys doing with the fusion, by the way? This fusion, I'm actually skipping on. I'm not. I'm not participating in this fusion. I'm giving myself a break, and it feels good to not have to worry about doing a fusion. I got to admit, this is a nice, nice little area for breathing within raid. Because we were just going back to back with events constantly. First it was Alatreon and it just, it feels like it didn't stop from there. Because it went from Alatreon to Archer to Armand's and then the Armand's um, soul. Anyway, here is my Vogoth's entire stats. 100k. I, I like this actually. Uh, 2.5 defense. Nice and slow, and some res and accuracy. Not too important in my opinion. Again, I'm only prioritizing HP. And we'll see if that was the right thing to do. I definitely think that the hardest part of trying to do this video is trying to figure out um, a team that I could use Vogoth in, especially because I've never really used Vogoth before. I mean, how do you guys use Vogoth? I'm gonna try to try to beat this team here. We're gonna take, uh, let's actually put, we'll put um, Geomancer. Actually, you know what? We're gonna put Torment in the lead for the sheep. Maybe we can get some sheeps off. Trying to find a team to put together is a little bit difficult, but I do like Vogoth. He is keeping mostly everybody alive. Let's go ahead and put this on Arbiter so that when we do take damage, it gets reflected. And never mind. Looks like that's just not happening. As you can see, Vogoth is getting some heals in. He's doing some ally protect. And those heals popping off. He's just tanking it. He's tanking it. He's taking all of it. Oh. Come on, dude. Stay alive. Let's do this. We got this. We got this. We can pull this off. We can do this. Oof, oof. He's not dying. He can't be stopped. He keeps healing. Oh, finally. But by now, uh, we just got to give it to Torment. I do remember one time I went up against a Madam Saris who was in a, a regen set and she just wouldn't die. It actually looked a lot like this. Torment versus Madame Ceres. 
Just constant back and forth. Finally, yeah. Hey, we got a win, guys. Look at that. We got a win. This team looks like it could be fun. It could be fun. Let's bring let's bring our mons in and see if we can take this team down. All right, so we're staying alive. Unfortunately, Geomancer was stunned. So we stunned them, but he's probably going to cleanse everybody. Unless we can sheep him, we can, okay? And let's go ahead and take care of Mortu, since he's a really big threat. Oh no! It's okay. We're okay. We can do this. Let's provoke everybody. Except for uh, Pytheon over there. Got our extra turns in. Come on. Die. There you go, Sham. Get him. Let's stun everybody again. The power of our mons. Let's sheep Harima. And now we take care of Mortu. There we go. Start hitting, hitting him. Hegemon. Now Harima is our next biggest threat, but I'm pretty confident that Shamael can take care of her. Although, using our mons did feel kind of like a cheat code, so let's not use our mons again with Volgoth. But you guys did see he was able to uh, keep the entire team alive. Oh, look at this! Another Volgoth team! Let's actually copy his team. Let's let's copy his team. Oh, wait, what am I doing? Volgoth is right there. Alright, so he has Pytheon and UDK. Let's put it like this. And then instead of Sham, he's got... A Nuke Wukong. Where's my Nuke Wukong? That's uh, Support Wukong. There's... All right. <laughs> Let's copy it. He's got Vogoth. So that's a... Uh, that'll be cool to see. Let's start off by placing block buffs. And of course, I completely forgot that that's a thing. Let's place the Provoke on everybody. He's he's healing his entire team. Yeah. Can we sheep him? We can't. This is not even a support we call. Him. Seems like it could take a while. Vogoth versus Vogoth. Take it back. Yeah, Vogoth and UDK together, plus Pytheon, does seem like an interesting, interesting fight. There's a lot of healing going on, a lot of tankiness, damage mitigation all around. Or that UDK will not stay down. It should be like a. Let's wait to use our cleanse against that Sun Wukong. Let's work on. It. Let's work down UDK first. Let's not place the heals yet. Let's wait for him to use his A3. There it is, and now we can start cleansing. Look at all those heals popping off by Vogoth. Now we can do this, and then do this. Not bothering with hitting Vogoth quite yet. It's a nice hard hit. There it is. And we are the superior Vogoth EDK Pytheon team. Although I do have uh, a plus one Pytheon. So here's that. Let's try the same team against Leo, who does AoE moves. And let's see how our healing takes. Oh, we got provoked. Look at the heals. Pay attention to the heals. Oh my god, we're dead, never mind. Wukong's back. Oh no!
Okay, die. Oh my gosh. Sun Wukong. They just got Wukonged. That's fun. One strategy that I used to use was I used to have one champion that would tank all of the Spiderlings' uh, attacks. Now, Vogoth being Spirit Affinity is going to be targeted by the AI, by all of the Spiderlings, because he is negative affinity. Spirit is weaker to magic. Chronum and Yareg are equal affinity, so they're less likely to be targeted. If you had a Void Champion, it's the same thing. And because Rathalos and Pytheon are a positive affinity against magic, they're less likely to be targeted. The only exceptions would be is if any of these other champions are close to death, then the AI would consider them to be more so killable than Vogoth. But for the most part, you're going to see that the Spiderlings will be attacking Vogoth. And because he's tanking everything, he's healing himself, and he's healing everybody else on the team, they can just focus, or we can. this team can focus just on using HP burns to tick away at the spider's health. So if you don't know this, you're going to want to... Like, if you're trying to build this team, what you want is to have somebody do HP burns, AoE HP burns, and Cronum does this very well. He is a free-to-play champion that you can, that you can get. You just got to kind of work towards him. And he does AoE HP burns. Every time an HP burn ticks, whether it's on the little ones or the bigger ones, everybody is going to receive damage. And so if you can keep the entire team alive, then you can let those HP burns go to work, slowly ticking away at the boss's HP. See, 232 every time an HP burn ticks. And you can see that Vogoth is taking the brunt force of everything because he is of negative affinity. He's healing himself, he's keeping the entire team alive. One way that you could make this better is to make sure that you work towards getting him in a regen set. A regen set will help him stay alive a lot longer so he can keep everybody else alive um, a lot longer. We have Yarig in here for extra support. So he does have a passive that places continuous heals. Um, I think it's like whenever somebody's a hit with a, a move that expels most of uh, their HP. I can't remember, but he does bring ally protect and he does bring the decrease attack on the spider boss because she does nuke down the entire team pretty heavily. Rathalos is here. He pairs very well with Cronum because he does more damage with his passive. Also receives less damage, I think, by enemies who are under HP burn. And then Pythion, just for good measure. Extra heals and a revive in the event of. I just threw this team together. Um, this is not my actual team. Yeah, I, I threw it together and tried to come up with something that maybe you might have the ability to make. So, yeah, HP burns is a, a great way to, to get through the spider. 24 and 25 if you're trying to do it. Might take a little bit. Might take a little longer, but it'll get done. But this is one way that you could do it if you're in needing, if you're needing something like this. But yeah. I guess what I could do is also... I I'm trying not to use all my OP champions just to make it somewhat more so relatable. But you could bring in like another healer. So like if you have Battle Kazar, this would be over a lot faster. And pretty much everybody would be staying alive. But there you go, 96 turns. And we're gonna sell that. The the ratings are pretty good in Fire Knight. So we just threw this together. Uh, epics and rares only. And we'll see how fast it clears. I think it's going to be pretty reliable. I mean, Vogoth is here, keeping everybody alive, right? We are positive affinity. So Vogoth isn't going to be targeted here. I am curious to see how this goes. I do, I remember um I was struggling so much with with Fire Knight. Just Fire Knight 20 way back then. I even asked uh Deadwood Jedi to do cuz and you're going to see like I, I asked Deadwood Jedi. I always mention like oh I, I did uh, I had Deadwood Jedi do my clan boss team. I had Deadwood Jedi do, do my Fire Knight team. Like back then I was just watching raid. I wasn't really into it, but I wanted to complete things. And I, he was one of the only CCs at the time. Like it was him, Chosen, 
Hell Hades was just about getting started. He still Hell Hades didn't show his face before. Did you guys know that? He it was a it was a long time, long time ago. But he used to not show his face. Um, he did a face reveal li later on, and then he became the best or one of the best here. I mean, he's the, he's the highest subscribed, most watched, right? But yeah. Uh, anyway, Deadwood Jedi helped me make a team together, and I remember him putting like Arbiter, Dracomorph, and Cold Hearts together in a lure, and this kind of brought me back to that. But yeah, uh, you guys saw that Vogoth did something. He did something there. I think it was just bringing the shield down, helping to bring the shield down pretty much. Just to be honest, my Cold Hearts were moving pretty fast, and my Stagnites moving pretty quickly as well as my Allure. Uh, so if you don't have fast speeds, what you could do for Fire Knight is build a tankier team with Vogoth in mind to help keep your entire team alive. It would pretty much be the same concept for for Dragon and, and Ice Golem. Uh, he would be there as, as an awesome healer for your team. A fun fact, if you guys didn't know this, I was actually the first content creator to come out with a guide for Neldor Rhymeblade. Uh, Neldor Rhymeblade. Did you know that? First one. I was the first one. Check that video out right uh, there, somewhere there.